Beckman 2, Northtown Neighborhood News Magazine, a presentation of Sonny Hirsch and myself. It is a pleasure. Oh, caps24.org for all your community policing needs in the 24th District, which consists of West Rogers Park, West Ridge, whatever you want to call it, Rogers Park, and the northern part of Edgewater. Um, NTNM.org for all our shows on the web. It is a pleasure to introduce you to a candidate for the 9th Congressional District, and that is Max Rice. Max, thank you, thank and, you for and the coming. pleasure is all on this side of the table. I've been a fan for many years, and thank you. anyone watching, if this is your first time, I implore you to keep watching. This is the type of TV shows we need to support. Thank you. Because people lot of talk a lot about federal issues, and they like to talk about who'd you vote for, Trump, Clinton, Romney, uh, Obama, but we don't talk about lo local politicians enough. No, not, not any. And they are the ones enough. who really are relevant in your life. They can send you to jail, they can fund your small business, they can make your life hell, or they can make your life heaven. So yes. thank you, and you really do a lot of mitzvahs. So. Thank you. I, I got to tell you, a guy once uh, told me, he says, I really don't care who the president is, I don't really care who my senator is, but I really care who my alderman is. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> and we, we both voted for the same person, too, for president. Kasich? I thought you voted, you wrote one in. I did. I wrote, yeah, well, I wrote in John my grandpa. Kasich. My grandpa never voted, so I wrote it in. Melvin I Rice. wrote in, yeah. I did write in, I wrote in John Kasich. Yeah. And you know what? I was undecided up, up, up till the day of the election. Me too. It was a Jewish dilemma. I, I was trying to figure out, well, no, no, I, I yeah. knew I wasn't going to vote for either Trump or uh, Clinton. Well, I agree with a lot of Trump's policies. It was just I the sexual a sexual harassment. Too. Well, it's not just yeah. a sexual harassment. Jeffrey he's, Epstein. He's complete scum. Yeah. I mean, that's... But to me, he's also like a poor man's Ross Perot. He was one of my favorite candidates ever. And a lot of what Ross Perot said in the 90s came true. I have to like Ross Perot. I, I agree. I love him. And Trump is literally a poor man's Ross Perot. He's yeah. actually worth uh, $10 million. Or, I just, yeah. uh, to be honest, I'm older than you, and I just he remember was... Trump from the beginning. Trump has always yeah. turned me off. No, I, I, I actually thought about voting for Theo Epstein. <laughs> that, that would be a good one. He'd do a good job. He really yeah. turned the Cubs around. And by the Holy way, it turned hell. out he finished third in the election. Theo or? Theo. Oh, or Harambe. Uh, Theo. Wow. Well, well, no, no. Yeah. I mean, well, first of all, in no, area. in terms of, in, 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 I should say in Chicago. Hmm. I mean, the, the truth is that no vote counted in Illinois that wasn't on the ballot or declared as a yeah. write-in. So technically, none of the write-in votes counted. Yeah. And I was aware of that, but there were so many down-ballot elections that were more important. No, no, I, I yeah, voted Yeah, it was very those, rewarding but... to, to vote against every judge. That was pretty fun. <laughs> 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 and, and, and also, I think it is, it's important to mention uh, the election on April 4th. It's a travesty that a lot of people just weren't aware that it happened. And 20% uh, turnout in Cook County. It was, the, yeah. the turnout was absolutely ridiculous. That, and... Uh, you know, th there were races in Evanston that were decided by, like, seven votes and eight votes. Absolutely. Like, Ian Rainey, who, who was my favorite Evanston alderman, only won by about eight votes. Yeah, that's one family. And, yeah, yeah. I mean, that that's, yeah, one family switches the way they vote. That's the difference. So and, and a you, lot of races, it was 5%, and it's where, where our priorities. Like, there were, uh, from Chicago Heights to Kenilworth, the turnout for elementary school board was 4 to 5%. So it really makes wow. you think, what are, what are people's priorities? Actually, one of yeah. my guests, one of my guests on an upcoming show, um, is actually the youngest uh, person elected in Illinois, and he won a school board race. Jake Lay, big yeah. fan. I, yeah, I'm, first yeah. time I'm meeting him all. There's three people. There's three people that I am meeting for the first time, so it's going to be an interesting shoot. Um, I do. By the way, for those of you who don't know, I do. We're going to do four. We do four shows in the shoot. We usually do at least three. So why don't you tell us about your background? My, I'm really not much. My favorite Abraham Lincoln quote is, uh, I'd rather be a little nothing than an evil something. <laughs> and I'm a little nothing. I work at a sales job. I won't mention it because, for, you know, I can't go on air. Right. And, uh, you know, went, went to college, dropped out of college, uh, film background, communications background. Oh, cool. And I'm just pissed off. And no one was going to do anything about it. And so here I am. There, and we've, we've talked about this before off camera, but there are a lot of actual criminals that are in the state government. And... I don't yep. think the problem can be solved at the state level. We really need the federal government to come in, uh, investigate a lot of these people for a RICO violation, in my opinion. A lot of what's happening is racketeering. Especially it is with racketeering. You give, she gives money to person A, and that person gives more money to her husband. For instance, uh, Rob Lagojevich. She gave $40,000 to Rob Lagojevich. He gives $400,000 to her husband. How is that not racketeering? 
And the reason is I don't think this, the, the Illinois is just so corrupt. We all know that and we all laugh about it, but no one's gonna do something about it until we get some outsiders, well, until we acknowledge the problem head on, investigate. Yeah. Uh, Shikowsky's campaign manager got real mad at me last time because I mentioned on air that her husband was a convicted felon. Oh, which time? There's been so, a few uh, investigations. And he, uh, I don't want to, what's it called? I don't want to talk too badly about people, but he's been caught in a few lies, personally. Oh, okay, more yeah. than a few lies. Yeah. And the fact of the matter, you know, people don't realize what this guy, this guy basically is a political consultant is a nice way to put it. <laughs> That's a very nice way to put it. The, the, the robocalls you get telling you unbelievable lies yeah. that seem to work so well on certain people, um, many of them come from him. Yeah. That's his company. Mobilize and, NA, by chance, is the name of the company? I, I don't remember the name of the company offhand, but I do know this, that they have used whether or not to robocall against the yeah. candidate for leverage. She has basically... She was not the political animal she is now before she married um, Kramer, uh, Kramer. Right, Bob, Cr Bob Kramer. And um, he basically is, is the political brains behind it. And she ba basically, almost every single elected official in the 9th Congressional District, down to Alderman, Ward Committeeman, mm -hmm. you name it. Water Black Reclamation District. Yeah, uh, well, up to a point. I mean, in, in Evanston, you've got that. Uh, Horrid woman who is the um, yeah uh, yeah yeah no I can't pronounce her last name. She she's the born again lesbian. <laughs> and, a, well, she, I can't yeah. think of her name, but no, she. Um, oh, what, uh, it's the Rogers Park uh, state rep, correct? Or oh no no no, you're talking about Kelly Cassidy. No, now, everybody's talking. The base the, yeah, the fact is everybody owes their allegiance to Jan. Yeah, and the fact is that Jan was also instrumental in. Uh, getting the Silversteins in there as opposed to uh, Bernie Stone because Bernie basically told Jan when she wanted his allegiance to go fly a kite. Because it's all about mm -hmm. me. It's not about, it's all about me and self-survival. Yeah, she's basically, every single, every single political organization she's, she controls in the 9th Congressional District. And you know what, for being this, she used to picture herself as this nice little Jewish lady, but... She might as well be smoking a fat cigar. She's, yeah. She is as shrewd and savvy a ward, you know, a politician as, as they well, possibly. It's, it's, it's like half sad, half comical. If you saw recently, she was uh, begging for Donald Trump to release his tax returns and how probably most of his money goes doesn't go to charity. I, I think that's really comical because I want her to release her tax returns. And I, I don't think much of her money is going to charity from what I've oh, seen. Oh, it's interesting. I never thought She's on the board of uh, seven different charities. And from what I've seen... Uh, I don't. I don't think a dime. I think I'm, I'm willing to bet my election less than ten percent is going to charity. I have no idea. And so, so it's, it's kind you. of a question of saying one thing and doing another thing. Because I agree with um, Congressperson Shikowsky on some issues. Very few, probably <laughs> enough to fit on my finger. Well, actually, you but know what? The, I hate to the, say it, yeah. but I always, I always gave her a lot of respect for always standing with Israel. Well, but when she walked out on yeah. when she walked out on Netanyahu. And she stood with Obama um, on the anti-Israel uh, on the anti-Israel proclamation in the UN, yeah. which is I can't begin to tell you how damaging that is mm -hmm. to Israel. That basically means if you're just a regular citizen that lives in the western part of Jerusalem, mm -hmm. that was the capital of Israel, you know, from the House of David, yeah, uh, and before yeah. actually. Um, you know, you if you go to a foreign country, under international court, you can be arrested, mm -hmm. you know, as, as a criminal. And in fact, when Sipi Livni, who's an Israeli um, cabinet member, uh, was going to go to an international conference she was invited to um, in Brussels, she was warned by the government that if she set foot in on you know the soil there she would be arrested wow and this is a result of obama not vetoing uh that pro that final proclamation um that will do and, and you know this is something that won't be undone because you need the full vote of the security council to undo it and russia and china will never vote for that will not happen 
And yeah, and even above that, she meets with CARE, I think, on a, a monthly basis. And that's the kind of a propaganda front for Hamas, if you're not aware of them. No, they're not. C-A-I-R. She does a bunch of events with them. Well, and just the fact, just how could anyone that actually believes that Torah is real, and we, we pray to the Western Wall, say that, that that is Palestine? Or when we say the Shema, Shema Ya Palestine? Or Shema Ya Israel? No, it's not Israel. It's not. Uh, you talked once in one of your interviews about uh, Rahm Manuel, about how he is a candidate that happens to be Jewish. Yeah. Like, I don't think being Jewish disqualifies, even though it's important to separate church and state, to have that moral center and to acknowledge the religious significance of that land. We're not just fighting over Rhode Island. Well, the funny thing is that Rahm's father is very strongly pro-Israel. Oh, yeah. IDF. Didn't he fight in the IDF? Or? I, I, that could yeah. be. I know he, 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 he was I a native he Israeli. Yeah. And you know what? Rahm at one time, too, volunteered um, during the Gaza campaign in the early 90s. He actually volunteered and he worked in the motor pool uh, because you can't be a soldier, you know, being an yeah. American citizen. So it's not that he didn't have ties, but the Oslo Accord was actually, he was the brainchild behind the Oslo Accord, oh, wow. which is haunted. People don't realize he was Clinton's go-to guy on Israel. And the Oslo Accord, is, of course, it is um, darkened Israel's path um, toward progress, you know, throughout the last 20 something years. And frankly, if the Arabs aren't going to follow the Oslo Accord, I don't know why Israel is still which, sticking which to it. Which they won't. And it's really sad to see, especially my generation, how it, there's a lot of misinformation out there about Israel as yeah. occupiers. And people don't talk about the 800,000 settlers, quote unquote. You know, and one, where are they supposed to go if. Yeah. One thing yeah. I will say for Jane Schakowsky, and, and I don't mean to, to be that praiseworthy of her, yeah. but. You know, no give worries. credit where credit is due. Absolutely. She did stand up for Israel for many years. And even when George Soros made her the single most donated to person from his, um, from his J Street anti-Israel organization. But you know what? The, the, she turned. She just, it, it was a matter of time. She just turned on Israel. And that's very unfortunate. It really is. Just as just on a human level, above the political level. Because, I, you know, I'm running for American pro Congress, not uh, Israeli, con the Knesset. I take it you're yeah. running as a Republican? Or? I'm running as a Republican, but I also want to change the Republican Party. There's a lot about, a lot about I think Republicans really went astray. I want to go back to the, the beginning, the Abraham Lincolns, the James Manns of the world. And we really, we really took a big turn, Republicans. I'd say after Eisenhower, in my opinion. Well, that's true. And actually. the Illinois Republican party itself, there are a lot of things that just need to change from the inside. No one's talking about Dennis Hastert, which was a travesty when, uh, when Jerry Sandusky went to jail. A uh, bunch of other people followed at, at Penn State with Dennis Hastert. Oh. He's the only one to, to serve in his nine months for a crime that serious. Uh, one in four girls are uh, sexually molested before they're 18. One in 10 boys, and we just we won't talk about that because the politicians aren't involved in that, unfortunately. It is a shame. Yeah, and I, so I want to run as a Republican, but part of the, the, the whole point of this campaign is to change the Republican Party, to speak truth to Jan, and to make shift happen, win or lose. Gotcha. Um, so uh, what do you, campaign-wise, you got a website? MaxVersJan.com. Max what? MaxVersJan.com. Okay. And we're going to be highlighting the differences between myself and, and her, what happens if she wins versus what happens if I win. And You have... Um, do you have a Facebook uh, presence? Uh, yeah, Max. If you just look Max Rice up on on Facebook, you'll you'll see my page. Okay, and I mean it's still early, so I guess yeah. you're just getting started. Remember, along remember those lines. the November, uh, the sixth of November, two thousand eighteen. That's right. You're really yeah. not. Uh, is there any? Do uh, you have any opposition on the Republican side right now? Maybe or? we'll 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 see about that. Maybe uh, Joan Lasanda, but I welcome competition. Competition's great. Gotcha. And I'm not gonna bad talk. No, I have to wait, Joan. Yeah. But, but in any event, I want to thank you very much, Max Rice, for being here. Thank you so much. Here. God bless you, and please watch this show if it's your first time or second time. This is a good thing. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sonny Hirsch, my entire technical crew. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Thank you bye -bye. so much. My pleasure.